So I am Priscilla. Um, on behalf of Arts Platform, welcome to our dialogues at part of our program, Practice as Research on Personal Being and the Wider World. So before I introduce today's speaker, please allow me to make some general announcement. So some of you are already doing that. You are already putting your hello in our chat box. But uh, if you want to let us know who you are or if you want to connect with us, uh, you can continue to say hello, tell us a little bit of who you are. And uh, if you want a little bit more than that, if you really want to meet us, then PM us or send us a message on our social media, then we will follow up later. So during the whole process, if you have any question, you can leave uh, questions in our chat box as well. If time allows, then I will um, forward that question to Manos. Are we all good? Yay, hello, Afi. And uh, I saw some friends here too. Welcome. Yeah, so you can continue to type. And um, today, um, our topic is collaborative arts. Our speaker will use his previous works as example to illustrate his philosophy and working method. And then after sh uh, his sharing, a member of AP will also join me and then have a chat with him. And if we have time, we will actually open the floor for Q&A. So you can type and if we have time, then we will actually let you speak to him. That would be very fun. And uh, so I, as we go into today's program, uh, let me tell you more about Manos. You can see him already and uh, you can see how magnificent he is. So this magnificent Manos Zangari is a composer, percussionist, and an installation artist. Sometimes I, I think he's also a comedian, but I didn't ask him about that, so he probably hates me now. But I think he's a very, very funny person, actually. So uh, he is one of the most important representatives of experimental music theater. You will have a better picture of his style of music theater in a moment. So probably a little bit different from our traditional uh, music theater. Uh, Definitely not the Broadway kind. So you'll see in a bit. I first learned about Manos in many, many books uh, for my research. So it shows you how influential he is in the field. He is a professor and guest professor for so many universities, including the Bavarian Academy of Fine Arts, the Norwegian Academy of Music, and one that I cannot pronounce, but I will try. That is the, I forgot actually, Hoshole for music called Maria von Weber Dresden. Did I get even one word right? Beautiful. Are you sure? So we translate that at Music University of Dresden. And he was also the artist in residence at Zurich Universities of Arts. He is the founder of the International Institute for Kunstermittlung, correct? Kunstermittlung, yes. So he researched in a very interesting field called scenic anthropology. And he has been the artistic director for the Munich Biennial for Music Theatre. And he does that with Daniel Old, who is also a very interesting artist. So needless to say, he is commissioned all over the world. So how do you prove that? It's because if you ask him about his sleep pattern, then you will understand how busy and how popular he is. So uh, people are fighting uh, for him all over the world. And I was honored to meet him in 2016 uh, when um, I had to write a research paper. So we had a few good chats, some good food, and we did a very formal interview. And I also was so lucky to saw uh, one of his productions. And that production, that performance actually influenced me a lot. And he already know that I stole ideas from him. And uh, seems like he's quite happy about it. And uh, pro I promised him today that I will write a piece uh, in his name in the near future. So very soon I'll have a piece called Manos. Then now you know that it's for him and because of him. <laughs> and um, I say it here now, so I have to write it. So uh, until today, I am still fascinated by his ideas and his work, and uh, it will never finish wanting to discuss about his works. He reminds me a few very important things about being an artist, and I'm very grateful for that. This I didn't tell him before, but it is true. So therefore, he is my very first guest for this dialogue series. And now please join me to welcome Professor Mano Sangaris. Yay.
they cannot clap, so <laughs> I clap for them. Hello, Manos. Hello, everyone. Nice to not see you in this case. <laughs> I see, of course, I see Priscilla, but everyone, hi there. And um, I hope we will bore you the next hour. Seriously. You will not. So, Manos, do you want to, like, because when people talk about music theater, they directly think about Broadway kind of music theater. But yours is totally different. Do you want to illustrate a little bit about like how uh, the style of yes. your music theater? Yes, I will try. First thing, which sounds a bit like, a, hello, everyone, again. First, and, and thank you, Priscilla, for the very uh, profound introduction. <laughs> And, and nice introduction. Um, yes, you're right. Normally, when uh, all around the world, when I say use words like music theater, which is also can be anything, but most of the most of the people think either it is opera or it is Broadway musical. So they are not so much into, let's say, newer forms of composing and designing and directing performative things. Uh, performative events which are composed that's the thing because uh, I mean in a way everything is composed the way we we are set up now this is a setting uh, this uh, which is performative and composed in a way because we have a very clear framing by the technology and by the social convention so to speak and we are, meanwhile we are very used to it as well um, but what we what I meant or what we meant and we didn't invent this I mean my generation did not invent this I think that composers like Maurizio Kagel an Argentinian composer who, who lived in Germany for decades or John Cage probably every one of you knows the name or the work of John Cage or partly Dieter Schnabel also a German or um, Ligeti did some pieces which means we are using the toolbox of composition and of the very old toolbox of using memory systems like writing scores but nowadays it's also about uh, other memory systems recording film video etc uh, and aiming on uh, performative events music theater events in the widest sense what i i mean there's a there's a huge field meanwhile and probably most of you also know a little bit or even a, a bit more for me it was in the very beginning i did not think that i didn't had, have the the aim to become a composer you know the idea of saying okay i'm a, i want to be a composer and i'll be in the tradition of bach beethoven uh, schoenberg and stockhausen and not the next this was far, far away from my ideas and my ambitions. It was more like in the beginning, I was, I was very skeptical about writing scores because it's also a, it's a kind of old system. You know, the typical orchestra thing, there's a, usually a male conductor and he, he's doing cuck, 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 and then tuck, and everything starts. That's like monarchy, basically. So I, I was a bit skeptical about this idea of writing down, and as a composer, uh, yeah, being the the mastermind of all. But it was from the beginning on. It was about our life situation, and life situation already also in the seventies of last century were quite concretely. Uh, conditioned by technology. So you want to listen to music, turn on the radio, or you have a vinyl uh, record, okay, put on the music and you have the music. The, that, this is the, the, the normal thing. So loudspeakers, monitors in that time, uh, television, uh, were so present and so, part, so much part of daily life. Nowadays it's even worse, but in, in that time, so that I was very, um, concerned and a lot thinking about what does music mean in this context what is it it's completely decontextualized and to 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 put it into a very short term uh, i try to recontextualize what music could be and that means i very often write pieces only for two or three people in the audience 
or for changing audience positions on, let's say, the same process, seeing the positions from the piece from different positions. And so, so make the condition of the performance part of the piece. Because well, normally when we think about music or theater, it's still, it was at least, it was this, the old idea of I go into a space, there should be a huge uh, anonymous mass of people uh, watching something which is somewhere in front. So this is the old idea of, of publicness, of public. But public changed a lot. I mean, we are we're all having the, the public in here. Everyone has this, like a prothesis. And uh, it's less like a cave. It's more like an octopus. You're not trying to. It says, look here, yeah, click there, buy this, uh, yeah, remember the other thing, etc. And so this already started somehow for me very early in last century. And so I wrote a lot of pieces which started with what nowadays is being called immersion. So the audience is not an anonymous mass. It's there, there are defined positions for people. I mean, my, sometimes, as I said, three or five, or maybe only two in an elevator. But there's a kind of normal score. I, I, I try to write spaces. I don't write music here and some scene there, and there's a director. I write spatial processes which are concretely aimed and meant for individuals. So you as a body, yeah, you as a whole person have to be in there and experience it. It's more than, okay, live events, you, this is characteristic anyway, that you have to be there. And that's a nice thing. You have a collective feeling also in an audience. I still like that. But the, you as an individual the, will notice that the piece is here. Oh, thank you, Priscilla. Yeah, this is a piece from 1980. I actually, I wrote it in 1979, and it was for my teacher, Maurizio Cargo. And the idea was, it's a very simple little piece, but the idea was that um, I wrote, I thought about it for a few months, and then uh, a few friends, some colleagues of mine in the music university in Cologne helped me, and it should, have, it was only performed once. So, and it was only performed for one person in the audience. Do you, you don't see my, uh, no, be so nice. Uh, yeah, go back, Priscilla, go back. And you see this person, you see the head from the back on the right side. So they, he looked a bit like that, Maurizio Kagel. And so the idea was that um, when he came, he came for a class colloquium in the university. So he expected 10 people to, to be there and wait for him. But he opened the door of the workshop of this place and no one was there. Besides one person who showed up then and said, oh, oh, could you please sit down here? I mean, sit down on this chair. And he did that. And in that moment, there's a blackout. And what you see the little arrows on the, on the left side, the arrows in the graphics, means this is the sound it starts with an, a multiphonic of the of the clarinet okay but the arrows in the in the graphic itself up there up further up yeah so k is kagel this arrow means the movement of sound uh, around his ears around his head so it's it was much closer i mean so very little sounds very delicate uh, really meant to be only for for uh, uh, being close to the ears so and then it, uh, it goes on, okay, there are movements around that, there are some things being seen like pa an egg and a chicken egg and, some, uh, and someone's talking to, into his ear, and then maybe the next page, yeah, you see it's just a person for one, it's a piece for one person in the middle. And so the, the sound gets more and more vertical, it's more, more and more like one chord, and with different um, yeah, real, in different distances and moving distances to the head, the, the, the dashed lines means the, the tempi of action. So it starts fast and goes slower here in this case, or the other way around, yeah. Then in the, here, uh, there was a colleague outside waiting with a living chicken. <laughs> this is a bit crazy, childish, but there was a living chicken being brought in and it, it was flying through the space. 
And in the end, there's one last chord, and everyone is hiding again. And it was like, you know, like a dream of one and a half minutes or so. And he was, uh, I'm glad he survived it. So, but this was for me, of course, a kind of model, a first, the first time turning around everything. You don't need a huge audience, you just need one person. And I mean, at, in the end, we're all individuals who have two ears hopefully two eyes and a body to be in, in a situation. And I tried and I'm still trying to write for very concrete situations. And uh, it was a written score. Normally people write scores to, so that they write for the eternally. They want to be next Beethoven, yeah, something like that. So all around the world, they will play my ninth symphony. It is because I, this was the memory system. I put it down on a, on a score. And um, and this was also the other way around. It was it was not for the eternity. It was just to be played once. Uh, and next thing, it is uh, it is not the music. I would call it music, because the music is not just the sound. The music is the spatial uh, the spatial event, which is very concrete. But some things. I mean, when I do like this you will not split it into what you heard and what you see. I mean, okay, in, in this technology, you probably the, the seeing the visual part is a little dominant. But in real life, um, there are different aspects and movements and motives and, um, and kinetical stuff and light, the way you, you use light and the way you use objects flying th uh, through the, the image, through the picture. So this all becomes a, a counterpoint. This all becomes uh, something which which can move this the space and which becomes a, an, also a musical event in your perception. You can see that nowadays uh, I will be finished, Spiskula, in, in about 30 seconds. Uh, the nowadays I think we are we very we are very good in in getting used to different formats in, especially in technology, which um, which are composed. Any news, I mean, anything, anything, when you see the news uh, nowadays, in, I think in every language, in, in every culture, is very much composed because you have uh, someone speaking, you have um, some stock information here, the, the sports information is, is running there. There's someone in, let's say, in, uh, in Paris here, a correspondent talking uh, to this person in the studio. There, there are jingles and trailer being played. It, suddenly you have a music, but fanfare. Yeah, and so it's composed, it's designed. And so this is what happened very early uh, with, with technology also in everywhere. With a, in the moment when television became so strong, and now it's getting weaker, the unidirectional unidire television, but it's composed events. And what I tried and still try is bringing, uh, it's referring on technology, but it is a kind of not using the technology. It's using concrete spaces and concrete. This is new music theater. So, Manos, you make it sound like that you only write your theater for a very small audience, but indeed, sometimes you write very, very big work as well. Do you want us to? Do you want to tell us about the opera that you did? That you stop the subway stations, the subway line had to stop because of your opera. Uh, you know which one I'm talking about. Yeah, you, uh, there are different ones. With, uh, I did it twice or three times. Probably you mean Orpheus interludes, Orpheus Zwischenspiele, okay. the one. It, this is quite, for me, that's quite old. I think it was in 2002. So it's in between. The, the first example was from the end of the 70s. So one of my very first little pieces when I, I okay, I should say that in that moment, I noticed that we can use a, a tool like writing scores in a different way and so transcend the problems <laughs> yeah the problems which i mentioned in the beginning that that uh, there's so much social impact and so much so much implication in it so in, in the moment when i noticed i can use writing scores for um, 
yeah, something which really becomes something, a third, a third space, and it's not just a convention of orchestra. So, and, and this was in the end of 70s and 80s. So, I'm, Priscilla said, I should never say that I'm old, but uh, the work is, uh, now I, I, do, I do things, I started things some, you know, 45 years ago, and, and this is, I mean, in, in, in history, that's nothing. That's less than one eye blink. But um, um, what I wanted to say now, the, this this piece in the in the subway was in two thousand two, I think. And um, you can find you can find it on my website if you want, or in, in some somehow on YouTube. Not now. I was it, it. It takes too long to really show it. But actually, the subway in one German city, Bielefeld, which is kind of, it is a bigger city, but in Chinese or uh, international standards, it's very small. It's like a village, but they have a subway and they, there was just one line. They completely, uh, they, they kind of stopped any traffic. And so we, we could even use, we could even use trains and train movements in there. And um, this is a, you are right. I did. I actually, I wrote this piece uh, a few years after a piece called Winzig, which is a cycle of very immersive and small. Winzig means tiny, so it's really homeopathic. You know, very very small situations, and this is be, still being played sometimes. It's a cycle of different situations in a in a house where you. Uh, you go like on a fun fair, you know, you can, you send here, you, you have, get a plan, you say, okay, now I go here or I go there and or there. And there's a bar in the middle, so you can have, take a, take a break and drink a coffee or a wine or whatever. And then you decide, I go to the other place there and I get another piece of only five minutes, which, which is being looped the whole evening. So it's a, quite a relaxed piece, and, but very concrete as well. And after this, after this showed up and it became a little more known, I mean, you're wrong, I'm not popular, I'm not at all what you said, that's wrong, because it's really homeopathic, it's very, yeah, I'm wondering, I'm still alive, though I, I, do, I don't have any CDs or like other, like the real composers, you know, you want to hear my, or I have a DVD here, I don't really have that in that sense. You but, do. So you, yeah, then it's a mistake. <laughs> you do have CD. <laughs> you lied. That's a mistake. I'm sorry. Uh, continue. So, so after this immersive stuff, I, I, some people try to, to fix me on this, on this aesthetics, on, on or, or on this method or this principle and setting and dispositive, and so I wrote a few pieces uh, with masses. And what this is why you're mentioning it, Priscilla. It's it's uh, it's a piece with, I think the the ensemble was something like two hundred and fifty people all in all. I would say it was an orchestra. It was sing solo singers. It was a kind of moving choir and spread over different places. And and also the audience. I think the audience was sm smaller than the, the 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 ensemble there as well. Okay. And maybe we, if you if you like um, a mass piece, maybe it could be nice to have the the uh, pizzicato mysterium as an example, because there I was I was again I was not very I was not a good good man because uh, they asked me to normally I don't have concert I don't have even one concert piece, and so but this ensemble it's the Munich Chamber Orchestra is a very good classical orchestra. They asked me to write something for them. So I went to one of their normal concerts. They have a very beautiful space there in Munich. I went there and there was Beethoven uh, uh, violin, uh, violin concerto with Isabel Faust. And the, and the interesting thing was, and other program doesn't matter, but the interesting thing, they played it without a conductor. And I never, I, this was a great experience for me uh, because they, uh, the communication between the soloist and the, the orchestra was so amazing and so direct. I think conductors from time to time are disturbing. And so I thought about a piece which, um, which 
at least it, it uses the conductor uses, I mean, it, it's working with the conductor um, partly, uh, but it has also a few moments or a lot of moments where there's an alternative. Maybe we just look at the trailer and, and um, I send a little trailer uh, to, to Priscilla and we will, you will see what it's about. Tell me, tell me if it is the correct one. Yes, it's the correct one. So this is Munich in 2016. So, who's, this, who's this strange guy? Hm. So ein Pizzicato in einer großen Gruppe wirklich zusammenzubekommen, also rhythmisches Unisono zu erzeugen, ist eben viel anspruchsvoller als angenommen gemeinhin. Ist es Telepathie, ist es Erfahrung, ist es Schwarmintelligenz, wie auch immer. Wir alle wundern uns ja bei klassischen, großen klassischen Orchestern schon auch über die Verzögerung zwischen Einsatz des Dirigenten und Reaktion des Ensembles. Da liegen ja oft Sekunden fast dazwischen. Yes, uh, you see, this pretends to be like new music, uh, yeah, the very serious new music thing somehow, but it's very much about the question uh, 
when does an ensemble really need a conductor and, and when not at first and, and then the whole situation from a concert situation is kind of fading into a theatrical situation and from the beginning on the piece is 20 minutes long or so so there's a real development uh, you this was just probably five four minutes or something like that uh, so this is an example for for something which is uh, just not uh, um, so hom homeopathic maybe we, if you like show the uh, do you want to ask a question or should we yes i want to ask one question and then you can continue uh yeah. to let us know what you want to show next but in yeah. your work very often you have uh, interesting light so a lot of time you will have swinging light and then what we saw just now you have the small little light and i know that uh you have an idea of like how to use lighting as part of the music or what where is the musicality of those lighting in your work yeah well thank you uh because it's very important, as I said, on a theoretical level, that different the different mediums or the different tools are just all together kind of musical material, and you could see that here in the end, as you saw, the all, all orchestra orchestra musicians had two torches, and they 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 could use it in a different way. And um, I think light in general can have very different functions musically or th music in, in the music theatrical uh, context. The old theater mainly, you know, I mean the old theater which we still know is there's an actress or a singer and you have to see them and there's, there's maybe a, a huge dramaturgical concept which is fair enough. It's good if we see people when they sing most of the time. But uh, the way I used the light in the very beginning, I mean even also in the 70s last century was um, if it's our eye fun functions very different when it's dark. So also there, there are some organ, you, uh, you can read about it easily. And when it's dark, the, the sense for dynamics, so li little or a little more and, and, and for movement is much um, stronger and more sensitive than, uh, than if it's just bright. Then when it's bright, we were more into color, so to speak, yeah, in, in a very rough way. So I very I was very from the beginning on very fascinated in using little lights in quite dark spaces like melodies basically. If you have a torch and you do something like that, and you'll have a light melody, and this connected to oh, one note or to someone saying no, or I don't know. I'm improvising now. Yeah? So the con the con counterpoints you can get from heterogenic material. This is some something which interests me a lot still. Uh, first, because it's really spatial, that's a good thing. It's not just video, animation and computer, it's something very simple. And everyone feels that it's simple, that it's poor in a way. And that uh, it's so concrete also in a physical sense. Our body is, is, is uh, so concretely being involved. I mean, as a human, the human being, the individual. And the other thing is very pragmatic and very, uh, uh, when I was, 20 or 19 or 20, 21, when I started this, things like that, there was no opera house asking me or giving me a commission. So, but to, I could afford three little lamps and I could afford a string and have light pendulums, you know, like this. So, so this is, as you see, this, this is not a light. Yeah. Only my head is a light. No. And so it's poor. It was. Uh, it could be done with very simple uh, instruments and and tools. Yeah. And okay. On another level, of course, it is nowadays. It changed a lot. I mean, if, when you go to big cities, especially in in China, I mean the the uh, the shape of, for example, Shanghai or also Hong Kong. I mean, you have all those LED events. Uh, this didn't exist in uh, yeah, in 1980, so it was something special to have some little something which could blink or so. Yeah. Nowadays, our eyes are getting tired of too much, uh, too much uh, movement, too much. Uh, it is everyone is trying again to 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 be even more a little more spectacular, and but after f f five minutes, we stop watching it. 
That's the interesting thing, yeah. So it's not the essence of composition of or, or of art to to find something sensational here. It is more about the the inner connection of the the pieces. Yeah. I think that's a general thing, yeah. You you have sometimes you get something very very simple, but the way it's like like cooking, yeah. You have a, a very simple material. It has to be fresh. Okay, that's important. You have very simple material, but the way you combine it in the beginning, it's the separate ingredients, yeah. And then you cook it, and you have the the right idea to to do it. And then after uh, twenty thirty minutes, it's a wonderful meal, and it is something different that only the the only the the, the materials from the beginning. So I think it's very much like cooking and then we enjoy eating when it's fresh and uh, it's a third it's another level yeah it's the same with arts in general and uh, okay nowadays i did more than i ever did i did uh, pieces in daylight in the last years because i don't of course we're repeating after 10 years you have something like octaves like octaves you have something you you do again or it's you still are not finished with some ideas but I did a few pieces just in normal daylight because uh, that's another challenge. Uh, we, I only I even could show something, but you'd, for me the interesting thing with the little stage, for example, what you what you called the Vogel. You remember the it's a, the piece I did uh, a few weeks ago in Berlin. Um, it was connected to something called it's a very difficult German word Nachhaltigkeitsbude which means sustainability booth. We did something, we tried to do something without electricity and without, it's all, all the materials you see are found materials. So we wanted like a model do things without wasting anything, any material. So, and the interesting thing is this little stage you see, it's with daylight. So we had doors on, the, on, the, on, on both sides so that and of course, when outside, it was uh, on, on the outside, you, uh, when the weather changes, there's the sun showing up on some clouds. Uh, so it also changes the situation in the stage. And it's, you will see what happens. Okay, you can just show it. Okay, this is it already, yeah? Uh, maybe you show the next film of, from the same series as well. There's one where you see the kids. You can see the kids because it was uh, for families, yeah? It was really basic. It was not, not high culture or something. It was very basic for families and just people who dropped by. Uh, uh, you can see there, yeah? And so it's a little stage, miniature stage. You only see objects. And it's very child. I mean, really, the children loved it. This is why I took this. Uh, this it's all handy films. It's amateur films, you know. It's me. Now you see the changing light. Yeah, it's only with doors from the outside. <laughs> the kids. Hello, It's funny because you know uh, normally kids nowadays from the when they even they can can't speak, but they can already can use the 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 games and in in on smartphone. And so I was really excited. What happens when those kids see this? And the thing was, they were it is so simple with magnets under the yeah, so moving the little uh, screws, etc. And it was so nice that the kids really loved. I mean, they they took it. They didn't. They they took it and they stayed and. We played one weekend um, 
six hours all in all, a one hour performance, one hour something outside, different stuff, one hour, etc. And it was really in one of the, how can I say, very mixed quarters in Berlin. So very different uh, f families, uh, Arabic families, Turkish families, German families, uh, international, and very different levels of education, yeah. So that was a nice experiment. This is the last thing I, I, I performed a few weeks ago. Mm. That is magnificent. Did the, what did the kids say to you? What were they saying there? Uh, it was uh, very interesting because there are, there's also one with a, with a fork. I don't know. Is it, did I also send the one with a fork or didn't know? Uh, very often when it starts with the little things moving, they say, that's not real. <laughs> so I find this very funny because, uh, um, yeah. or they said, how, how do they do that? Yeah. Because in the computer, they never ask, or they say, they, they think it's real. I mean, the unreal is real somehow, <laughs> there always. Uh, and so the physical aspect, and in this case also, it's like an opera house. I mean, even for the kids, you have the, the format and the convention of a, of a normal stage, you know, with a portal and with scarves, and we call it sufitten, so up there so that you can, cannot see the, the tech, the technique the, of the stage up there. And it's really like an opera stage. And it, that works because then you have the relationship to the, the proportion is so that you have the feeling you, you, it also could be big. So a classical miniature model, I would say. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you have all these ideas that keep on coming. Where are they from? <laughs> Where are you? Your ideas from? Come on, you, 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 you either you go, go you, either you go to bed and have a question, and at four o'clock in the morning you wake up and you say, "That's nice." You, we could try, or you don't even say that. You say, "I write." Maybe it's bullshit, but I write it down. And next day you you find it and say, mm, "That's maybe." Or you say, Aha, "I thought it's genius, and it's really so banal." So everything can happen. Um, the other thing is, um, I'm as I have. Truly, I have quite a lot of commissions in the last years, and besides the the, of course, I'm grateful and it's a privilege, and I'm living in Germany, which is a, a good system for the arts. I have simply to say there are the broadcasting stations, there are festivals, etc., and so they help. Uh, but the one good thing about commissions is sometimes they ask uh, funny questions, you know, especially with me, because the. The producers know that I'm I'm doing uh, working also in strange uh, situations in subways and on towers and, and on 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 a boat. You find things like that if you want, and so I like that if you you get a strange situation as as in the beginning, then you have to also have to think about different solutions, so to speak. And the other thing is that. Uh, that's probably an individu uh, individual question. I'm, you know, in Chinese uh, horoscope, I'm a monkey, and monkeys always have too many ideas, I think. They have, that this is why they do too many things at the same time. Hmm? <laughs> oh. Are you a monkey, Priscilla? Which, which, which sign are you? I almost wanted to tell you, but then I remember that we have lots of audience here, so I'll tell you afterwards. Okay. <laughs> we actually discussed that in 2016. Well, but then uh, Mano, say, uh, you have so many, so many good ideas. And obviously, you have created many interesting, strange, uh, profound, and important works. So come to this stage now. What do you think a uh, good art is? What makes a good art? Do I need to give you three more hours to explain this? <laughs> this is what I would have said something similar. Yeah, it is. Um, this is, of course, a, a very complex thing. And actually, normally, in this way, I normally I don't think about in these in those categories. Yeah, I cannot. No one can start. You cannot start a piece and say, "I want to do good art." You have to be interested in an in a subject, in a question, in a in a problem. If you want, so to speak, you don't think about this category of good or bad. You just have. Some 
some very concrete questions like crossing a street or so. You don't think about how can I cross the street in the best way, theory. You just watch that you don't die <laughs> this way. This is a very spontaneous example. Now. But this is the truth. Yeah, you, you, do, you do. If you are too much with how I, can I theoretically cross the street the best way, then maybe you get killed because you're not, you're not attentive enough. Okay, but on another level, um, in the art itself, as I said, it's a bit like cooking. When, when is it a good food? First, it some, somehow it has to be, there has to be some nutrition in it. Yeah, it should not be, you cannot live from only uh, uh, everyday chips and uh, chips and sausage. Yeah, you also need some vitamins, you know, so there has to be something in there which is uh, basically, uh, which can feed you. We need, I, I mean, art is something very existential. This is, I'm really convinced, uh, as I said, this, the membrane to public, for example, the way the public, uh, uh, the communication in, um, with public happens, this is, I mean, this is really essential for the whole society, because, and that means it's very close to aesthetics, because the, this membrane of communication is uh, aesthetical, I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's composed, as I said, so, um, Okay, there are some very basic, um, yeah, okay, theoretical uh, aspects like uh, what they call coherence. Or when when is something coherent? Yeah, some some sometimes uh, something which looks ugly is much more beautiful than something something which tries to be beautiful all the time. I mean, yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, something. Uh, there's a quote by Leonard Cohen. You know, this singer songwriter, which I love. Um, very much it's called there's a crack a crack in everything that's how the light gets in yeah that means if the surface is too perfect namjoon pike the korean uh, artist and in the beginning he was a composer he had a sentence in germany if god if too perfect god is angry something like that <laughs> it was in german it was if, if if when if too perfect god is böse so yeah that means what is jealous jealous probably something like that um actually i still think that this sounds very romantic but somehow art is good art of course it's related i talk about theater now i mean theater in in theaton in greek i'm half greek only but uh, this i still know means this what makes to be seen which gives you the possibility to see to which means enlightenment yeah, yeah. which means you have to you have to uh, the things have to clear get clear with art they get clearer um and we need this yes now people was this an answer? Was it an answer yeah. or should I? Should and, I... Yes. and now I already am receiving message, like private message. People now understand why you influence me and why I invite you here. Oh, and you are a very romantic guy, but that is an other lecture, maybe. Well, now, I'm a romantic person. That's true. Mm. So funny too. Like so, you are everything, and you have big work and small work. And now before um. We don't have much time left. Do you mind if I show them uh, Wade again? Because I want to yes, show the other side of you. Yes, of course. <laughs> so I will show the video. I'll show the song. And then you can tell people what it is. Okay. Somehow we're always waiting for something, even if we don't notice it for the big moment. The crucial change, the love, the win, that decides everything. Wait. Wait. Hmm. Wait. Ha. Ha. Wait. We are witnesses. We're the boosters. We're the first to know, second to turn. We are the boosters. We are. We are supporters of the day. Wait, 
wait. Ha, ha, wait again. Wait. It doesn't wait for us, it just goes on. What remains for us is to be attentive, watchful and ah, just wait. Catch the right moment. Right? Catch the right moment. Just ha ha wait again. Simply wait. Wait again. Hey, wait for me. Don't run so quickly. Stay tuned. Stay here with me. And time flies into our heads. Stay basic. Stay here with me. And time goes through our heads. Just wait, simply wait. Ha, wait. It's always the same. It takes me away. We're waiting again. Wait a moment. Let's wait and see. Sit down and wait. No use to rush. Always the same. Ha ha, wait again. Ha ha, wait again. Let's wait again. Don't run away. Wait again. Sit down and wait. No use to watch. Always the same. Have to, have to wait. Just wait. Ha, ha, wait. Ha, let's wait again. Just wait. Ha, just wait again. Sorry. Yeah. Amazing. I have I I have very good speakers here. So the sound was like really cool. I was really enjoying it. Do you want to tell people more about this work? I think it speaks for itself. You mentioned in the beginning, I'm also a drummer and I played in bands. I mean, since I can remember almost, I started when I was a child and I played. Uh, but, I, you know, the thing, I'm doing so many different things that somehow um, the producing music theater, this kind of homeopathic, strange music theater uh, became... Yeah, it became, it takes a lot of time and work, but I'm still, I'm playing every day, actually. And this piece, I mean, this project is called Unlock the Stillness. I started it with a friend who is a producer. So the good sound is Dieter's business. Also he's, I'm playing everything, et cetera, and talking there. But uh, he, he's a professional producer for pop music, basically. And we have this project, Unlock the Stillness, which we started during the, the, lock, when, the lockdown, yeah, because it, we wanted to <laughs> unlock something. And uh, so it's, for me, it's a pleasure because I like playing still. And I play I like also, this is non-academic, as you see. It's not like, this is not written music or something. I, I, it's uh, basically a pulse improvisation, like, like in pop or some jazz stuff. And um, and the good thing is that I can go into the studio, highly professional studio, and when I have an idea, I can immediately do it. 
this is the opposite of, of working, scoring. Sometimes I, I work on a piece for a year, and then in one week it, it's being produced with professional musicians and actors and actresses and singers, etc. Et and here I can go, we have a day, we make an appointment, so in two months we have one day in the studio or two, and then I go there and we produce. And so we did three EPs or two, we have three, two are being pub published. Uh, the last one is called Telepathic Talents. And uh, yes, and the first one is, was called Unlock the Stillness. Okay, I like the, so it's a little, the big band with two people. We also play live, but then this is me with the vocals and playing little stuff and he is, is using a sampler and doing the sound, I mean, the, the, yeah, the backups, etc. I told people you are a percussionist, but I didn't tell them that you are also an actor. So now we are all surprised. I have a question from the audience for you. Are you ready for that? Yes. Um, I'll try my best. As an artist with diverse skills, what's your experience working, collaborating with other people? Mm -hmm. Do you like working That's with other Yes, I love working with other people. This is one of the reasons why I do music theater because you can you can work with people on very different levels, um, which also means uh, each discipline. What I call the memory system is is the way we can communicate. So, with a musician, classical musician, you communicate with your writers. You write music and. Uh, classical musicians are very, very well trained in reading and uh, bringing things to life. With uh, actors, normally you have, okay, you have some disc descriptive uh, level, uh, but mainly it's about text as well. Um, with singers, it is something in between, with dancers, with performers, with people who don't have su such specialized skills, etc. And the thing is, they have this, the different memory systems and the different traditions produce different uh, habits and different ways of rehearsing, for example. So with a musician, normally you have, it's a completely different way of rehearsing than with, a, with an actor, because the actor, they want to rehearse, they need the rehearsal, they want, they want to find a way through the jungle, yeah, how, how, what can they do? And, and the musician, the classical musician, normally, even the high class, they say we have an appointment till one o'clock and then they say, okay, thank you, bye-bye. Next, tomorrow we have another two hours. For example, this is very superficial, but this is it. The good thing for me is I love working with people, but I also like being alone and do my homework. And so to write a piece, I have to be sometimes very isolated. This is like the, the duty then I go out and uh, I can work with people and produce things. That's wonderful. And the other level is, okay, I improvise with people. I, uh, I also, I mean, I can, you can, can put me somehow yeah, everywhere. Um, if you want to improvise with me, we will find a way. Don't just say that. People will say, well, can I come? <laughs> but uh, the person that asks you the questions that he loves your answer and thank you. Thank you. If you, have, if you have more questions, you can send it in now. And if we cannot tackle that today, we will forward it for Professor Sangaris. Manos, do you have any final words for us before we go? Oh, that's very uh, good. That's also a good uh, point because I really didn't have any chance to think about. But we are living in difficult times. I mean, Europe is a war and you know all this and what happens in the world in the moment. And what I have to say myself every day is we, without only living our little lives, I mean, we all try to live our little lives, I mean, daily lives, yeah. We should, this is maybe the romantic aspect, we should not give up hope in general. Thank you. That's a bit a cliche and a bit too, but I th mean this very concretely because art is somehow very fast, too fast, and too slow in the same time. Yeah, for in polit some political mechanisms, or how can I say, as I said, the war in, in Europe, for example, is something uh, you have, have the feeling you're back in medieval times. 
how people behave. And so I still believe in the enlightenment, which can happen by education, which means art. Yeah. More people are saying thank you to you and um, some good words. I um, include some feedback, including it is really interesting to see how you deconstruct the notion of music and recreate people's perception of music as well. So these are some of the feedback. Thank you very much. Yes. Uh, everyone to be here in, in general at first and also for, yeah. So what you said, make what I will be saying very stupid, but I still have to say them. So I want to thank everybody for coming to the dialogue today. Before we actually end, I want to give you some preview of uh, what AP is doing and what Mano is doing. So for Mano's, he has a documentary coming. Uh, so uh, a team of filmmakers have been following him around for how long now? A decade yet? Uh, there were, in, you remember, when we met in, in 16, they were already on. So we have a lot, they have, I don't, it's not my film, they have a lot of material. And I think sometimes next year, maybe they get finished. I don't know. So in 2024, um, a documentaries about Manos will be coming out. So you can stay tuned for that. And the Munich Biennial, very important music theater uh, festival, it's also happening in 2024. So if you are interested, you can go to the website and check out what's going on. And for AP, for Arts Platform, we have three more dialogues coming. And we are launching actually a three-way collaborative artwork on our website. So uh, a writer researcher, Vivian. Our creative media artist, Kosin Han, and myself. I actually didn't introduce myself. I'm actually essentially a composer too. So we created a small work and it will be online in about a week or two. So please stay tuned for that. And we will also let you know on our social media. So if you want to revise today's content, because Manos actually gave us a lot of insights. So if you want to revise that, um, stay tuned to our social media too. And later on, you will be able to see the recording of this. This lecture and if you are interested in this pillow can you actually see yes let us know in our social media too uh so that's <laughs> somebody's laughing at me so <laughs> uh so we have to say goodbye to Manu. So please help me to say thank you to him one more time. Yay. And I also want to uh, say thank you to all our live audience. And uh, I need, really need to say thank you to my producer and manager, Sanfi, because without her, nothing here will happen. And you see her very, very hard work behind the scene. And also today we have our helper, Kathy, to deal with our technical issue. Last but not least, I have to thank our sponsor, Hong Kong Arts Development Council and the School of Everyday Life for supporting this program. That's all I have to say. And thank you very much, everyone. I hope to see you again soon. <laughs>